Hello, uh, I'm a visiting instructor at New Mexico Highlands University, and I'm... Let's adjust your mic just down a little bit. You're going to have to get right up on it. Okay. Can everybody hear me? All right. No? Okay, you're going to want to project really hard. All right. Sorry about that. Nope, I'm just falling. Hello? All right. So I'm a visiting instructor at New Mexico Highlands University, and I'm also the lead developer at the Cultural Technology Development Lab, which is an R&D program where university faculty and students um, work with museums and other partners to um, create technology and design solutions for cultural institutions. So at last year's summit, I, I spoke about the Acadia National Park Visitor Center um, and how the lab was given the opportunity to uh, introduce open source hardware um, in a national park using a combination of electronics from online suppliers as well as our own custom boards. So I also spoke about some of the design challenges we faced while we are working with, a, uh, with contract fabricators and the federal government. So I'm also happy to report that both our RFID bird matching game and our rail um, ran uh, without any issues for two seasons, which is equivalent to about two four-month periods and 140,000 visitors later. But early, earlier this year, we received all these panicked emails about how the rail wasn't working. So at that point, we discovered um, just how much uh, staff was willing to do in order to troubleshoot, uh, which turns out putting up a sign and waiting for the exhibit designer to fly out to this somewhat remote location uh, with their spare uh, components, only to find out that it had been, uh, been unplugged the entire time. <laughs> and this is kind of the case at every museum. Uh, when something doesn't work, they simply sh shut it off to the public, um, and it typically stays closed for months at a time um, until someone, um, some of the appropriate staff can fix it, or eventually they have to hire the original developer, or they get rid of it altogether. Um, and in many cases, um, museums tend to buy um, any, any form of exhibit, any exhibit with any form of technology tends to be a purchase proprietary solution. And in many cases, um, the people that they hire to, to place these exhibits in their uh, museums, um, a couple years later, they tend to either uh, close their doors um, or they have to buy this like uh, technical support package. Um, for museums that don't have a very large budget, it's just not a sustainable uh, long-term plan for them. So by building exhibits with open hardware, um, this gives uh, developers full control over the design and functionality with the ability to modify and update later. This also means that trained staff can fix broken exhibits more efficiently and cost-effectively. It also gives museums the opportunity to try something new without uh, fully committing to an expensive proprietary package. So in the work that I do, I often use open source for both hardware and software-based exhibits. And at the end of every install, um, we provide documentation and training to those who maintain the exhibits. So this year, we worked on some exhibits for the new Manhattan uh, Project Historic Park, which is located in Los Alamos, New Mexico, uh, which is also home to the uh, Los Alamos National Labs, um, where scientists played a key role in creating nuclear weapons during the Cold War. So um, today, the labs focus on non-military research, and we also have a particle accelerator. In working with this uh, museum, uh, they don't have a, um, a building just yet, um, so all of the exhibits are housed in the Bradbury Science Museum. So a group of students actually designed everything in the exhibit from the text panels to the interactives. And what they came up with was a secret pass badge uh, equipped with a red gel decoder to, to find hidden messages and it also had an embedded RFID tag. So throughout the exhibit they were able to take their badge, find these hidden messages, and scan their badge near RFID symbols to hear um, audio associated with those panels. The exhibit also included this 360 degree video of buildings that currently require um, a security clearance. 
And next to the video pod, we used an old card catalog cabinet that uh, had repurpose, uh, repurposed drawers. And so when you uh, took your RFID or your badge, you could scan your badge next to one of these specific drawers. And in, embedded inside, we had an Arduino, a wave shield, and an RFID uh, scanner uh, stack so that you can hear audio associated with those buildings. We've also been thinking a lot about accessibility and how we can add to the visitor experience. So when you open some of these drawers, um, you actually are given some smells. And so this is um, the chemical compound for hot electronics. So some of the smells that we included in these drawers were burning solder, coffee, and smoke. So if anyone really wants to bottle this scent, this is the chemical compound. Uh, we also do a lot of work um, for museums in southern New Mexico. Um, the ease of install and the low cost of a Raspberry Pi have made um, for great use with video players and uh, experimentation with uh, Kinect and um, camera tracking for projection. And we've also done a lot of work with a variety of Bluetooth beacons to highlight um, extended content from exhibit collections um, and also make those collections more accessible. Although the hardware is not open source, the operating system and the SDKs for many of the beacons we work with are open source. Um, over the past year, we've also continued development of the Museduino, which is an Arduino shield that extends the pinout of the Arduino platform um, using a Cat5 cable. We initially designed and printed through Express PCB, and we assemble in New Mexico. Um, but recently, we've made the switch to KiCad, um, and we're currently in the process of printing out a next run. Um, and we also print in very um, small batches so that we don't, uh, so that we can minimize the the amount of unused boards. Um, we initially built that board for ourselves, but we've shared a lot with the uh, exhibit developer and artist installation community. And our friends at the Santa Cruz Museum actually recently built a pneumatic tube system for donations. And it seems like I'm unable to launch the video. And since that install, we've been told that the donations have increased 10 times the normal amount. And within the exhibit developer community, uh, we also see Arduino as the sort of gateway board that gets uh, people interested in open source hardware. Um, the barrier for entry is low enough that even uh, beginners can think about uh, solutions that can be used in their own institutions. And um, my colleagues and I have also continued to present and teach workshops at museums and museum conferences um, to educate just uh, the museum staff about open source hardware, Arduino, and very uh, specific museum hardware projects. Um, with that said, I wanted to end on a poster that was created for a museum computer network conference last year.